Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the five net blitz with zero increment only chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible, making sure that you understand the flow of the game, all the lines that are happening in between what's opponent thinking and what we are thinking of a plan and trying to execute the same. And post the match, we'll have a quick computer analysis as well to understand what were the computer lines, what could have been done better at that point of time, and how we can improve our chest from there on. Before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. got the black pieces here we'll play c65 the karo khan defends yeah, that's kind of an english opening we'll play knight now on f6 defending the knight uh, defending the pawn and then bishop f5 probably now pawn to e6 we'll take takes back All right, so are we in some trouble? I bring back the bishop. How about attacking the queen? Okay, he takes. I have to take here, no other option. Oh, he won a piece there. That was nice. Okay, let's take on the bishop so that we can take on the pawn at least. That was well played by him or her. Let's take on our pawn, trying to equalize stuff. We have will have a discover attack after the knight moves. So we need to find a good square. Oh, he doesn't go for the attack straight away. Probably knight to d7. The idea is to castle on queen side. Because I have to defend g7 as well. The queen is eyeing, so I cannot castle uh, on the king side until I remove the bishop. Probably bishop will find its way on b4 eventually. Well, let's see what he does. Okay, he's now attacking the queen we have to move b4 probably we can even develop oh just trying to spoil castling it's okay i think it's trying to be over ambitious here because we can bring back the queen and defense the knight as well Okay, he is giving up. Can I take the queen? He takes back. I castle. That 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 makes sense to me. Or I can first castle. Let's castle. If he now takes, we can take back with the bishop. I have lost internet connection. No, it's fine now. Let's see what he does. He can give a check with the queen. Oh, he saves the queen. And now we need to develop the pieces. I move the queen that's fine let's give a check develop the bishop now so that both the rooks can be connected now i can align the rooks 
and try to get the rook on df file. I have to save on h7 as well. Pawns are important. Uh, he's building up some attack there again, so I need to defend the knight, for which I think I have to get the queen back. No other option. If he gets the knight, no, he cannot get knight on that good square here. That's good for me. Knight has to take a long road to come back to attack the d7 again. And by the time I think I can play b6, that saves everything. Okay, he's trying to align the rooks over there. So he has one, two, three, and the fourth attacker is coming. I have got two, three defenses. Can I get the fourth one? I doubt because to get that fourth defense, I have to come here and then do something about it. That's not happening. I can't move the knight, at least for now. But if I move the king ahead, then I can probably remove some pressure from d7. Yep, this makes more sense. If you can't defend, you have to remove the pressure, that's it. Oh, nice, a really good square here on c5 that attacks the rook as well as the bishop. That should be handy. Of course, we can take on the knight whenever we want to. Let's see what he does here. Does he find the knight move? That knight is coming in over there. Oh, it Doubt he does. So knight goes on c5, attacking the bishop as well as the rook. If he wants to trade the rooks, I'm okay. I have the queen as well. Everything will be sorted. He gives a check here. I have to move the king somewhere, and that's the only square remaining. That's still good, I guess. I don't see any troubles. On king and on b6 as well, knight cannot give a check because we have a knight standing there. Rooks are still hanging. Let's see what he does here. He takes on, we'll take back. He takes, I take back. Can take the pawn, maybe. Or then he will be losing the bishop there. I'll take on the knight first so that I can take on anything there, can give a check with the queen as well on uh, from uh, d1. He's trying to pin the knight. Takes, takes, check, he goes up. We'll attack the bishop. I think the position is nice for Yeah, queen here makes more sense. Controls on uh, the f7 as well. I can take on the pawn next move. Can give a check. Oh, he gives away the bishop. Oh, no. There's a pin. Have to move the king here. He can give a check. Okay. I go back. Looks okay to me. He gives another check. This time I can defend with the knight. 
He's losing out on time, so we don't need to do anything silly here. Is he trying to line some pieces? Let's see what he does. I'm okay if he takes. If we exchange everything, we, I am winning, probably. On time as well as on position because he has an isolated pawn there, which I doubt he can defend. Okay, this is fine. We are about to play and have connected pawns. This was completely winning position, I would say. There was no way that White was defending this. So that's the impact of bad pawn structure. That's what is really important at the end game. Because if you're going for all the exchanges, you should maintain a good pawn structure. That's what is Black doing here, actually, not White. Three connected pawns uh, on one side, two on the other. So uh, this is a... Uh, freeze position so nothing can happen from g and h files the center pawn will of course be weak once we start doing exchange uh, over here so yeah completely winning position let's quickly analyze the com game from computer point as well and see uh, how it went what we did wrong or what could have been done better so pawn to d4 is what uh, opponent starts with i play c6 he responds with c4 and now d5, asking him questions in the center directly. He doesn't take. And so uh, even I didn't. I just developed the knight on f6. He plays f3 here. Now bishop to f5. His bishop comes on g5 and I play e6. Now it's always important to take out your bishops out of the diagonal of the pawn chain. Otherwise, the bishop can be very inactive there on c8 and he plays e4 i take back do we exchange stuff there attacking the queen so what went wrong here was e6 at that point of time maybe i should have delayed it and first kick the bishop away but uh, after that point of time i was losing a piece for sure so i thought of after he takes uh, uh, the knight I thought of taking the bishop first so that if it takes queen, uh, queen takes the bishop, I'll take on the pawn. So at least there's some compensation. Uh, what computer is suggesting here is a bit different. It's saying go on b6 and that will not be much worse because, oh, you're attacking the weak pawn. So as soon as you move out your bishop, you are weakening up the b2 which can be now attacked. So he probably has to save rather than taking the bishop. So now, why is this the best move? So that I, yeah, now if I take, I'm probably losing after rook on b1. So of course I can't take now. In this case, I can take back the bishop and we don't lose anything, uh, but just the po bad pawn structure here. Oh, that was interesting. Let's go back to the game where I actually went for the exchange. Takes the bishop uh, and I go piece down, but I'm trying to cover that up with the pawn. He tries to develop the knight and I take on another pawn there. Castles on the queen side, developing the knight on d7. So we were behind uh, from beginning and we just tried to cover it up during the game. It's catch up from move number 8 itself. So now queen to b4. He takes on the knight, uh, he takes on the pawn. That was a weird kind of a sacrifice there, I'm trying to open up things. I take back, takes with the queen, and I get the queen back. Now, uh, yes, you can think of de defending it with the bishop, but then threat is the knight is weak uh, and the rook is aligned. That's why queenside castling when you are attacking is very nice. I had to get the queen here. I suggest. Uh, defend with the bishop as well and I chose to castle instead of exchanging the queens so I was thinking of exchanging queens as well that could have been handy as per the computer that was a better move and now if I castle now if I castle he takes I take back 
oh, then it can just probably get on the rook as well and I'm losing a piece again. So that was the trick, which I think. Yeah. OK. That's interesting. Actually, I'm just lost in it a bit. OK, then after that, he takes the queen back on h3, which is very inactive square for the queen. Uh, yes, it's eyeing the king, but that's that's inactive. Queens don't lie on the h or a files. Here I give a check trying to develop my dark square bishop, which now comes on b4. He aligns the bishop um, with the queen, attacking on the knight, creating more pressure on d7. I try to defend, brings the rook ahead, trying to align the pieces, right move, king to c7, lines the rooks, and now, yes, the I found this right move at good time. That was important to get the rook on c5 because it's now attacking a couple of pieces, so everything is in control. Then he gives a check, uh, and this was forced. Then no other move for the king, so king to b6. Take from the rook, I take back. He takes back again. Rook exchanging uh, rook exchanges happen there, and then he places queen on f2. Oh, I could have given a check, but I thought of just releasing some pressure from there. If I give a check, uh, is there some good come refutation from here? I Okay, I take, takes, I can take another pawn, that's probably it. Yeah, knight is pinned, that's the whole problem there as well. So it's okay, I just took on the knight, releasing the pressure, and give the check from d1 instead. Got it back on d6, the right square, attacking the bishop, bishop goes back. Yes, I had a pawn there, but I was trying to exchange some stuff so that I get more advantage there. He tries to save the pawn. Now I have to move the king so that I can take advantage of uh, the knight. He gives a check. I go back on c8. Another check. I defended with knight this time. Tries to align a bishop now. I let him do that because that's winning as per me. Oh, that's kind of a draw situation here as per the computer. Oh, that's when if you don't exchange the queens. And his plan was pretty clear. He had to take the queen to make sure he's in the game because he was losing out on time as well. So he takes the queen and yep, this end game is completely winning for black. You just need to know the basics, which is move the king first towards the center and then probably go on with the pawns. You have stronger pawns uh, which are connected white has weaknesses uh, of the isolated pawns so those are never going to be promoted and h and g files were completely blocked already that's what happens in the game we just try to take control and i try to break up open the b file after of course it takes i can take back got two pawns in the center that's that's what all it takes of course you can't move the pawn there and after he moves i can just push on any of the pawns so yeah it was completely winning and i hope there was something to be learned end game of course uh pawns should not be isolated and don't exchange stuff uh, that easy because uh, it makes life easy after you go have got a good pawn structure at the end so yeah, that's it for time. And I hope you like the video. Please do let me know your feedback. Do subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon and stay tuned for latest videos. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.